Calaroga Shark Media. Idly home, Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Tom Papa back on Netflix with his new special, Home Free. It's his third for Netflix. In Home Free, Papa holds nothing back as his kids are finally out of the house and it's just him, his wife, and a bunch of animals ready to return to their glory days. Tom has seen a lot over the years from close calls with a pachinko ball to late night 7-Eleven runs and he's sharing all his thoughts as he parties under the next stage of his life. I can relate. Uh, I, I don't know if I feel like I'm an empty nester, but none of the birds are home, man. It's just me and the wife and the dog and you know what I do on Saturday now? I don't know either. I've been going to soccer games for a decade and a half. Now I'm like, oh, I don't have anything today. And I wind up taking out the laptop and making seven hours of podcasts for the various things here on Calaroga Shark Media. By the way, you can get this show and all the others commercial free. So it's not just this one. When I hit you up for the five bucks, it's not just this one. You get like 20 shows. Link in the show notes if you're on Apple Podcasts. Click the banner. Papa jokes, now that they're all gone, nobody tells you how hard it's going to be pretending to be sad. It is sad, Tom. You know it's sad. You know it's a little lonely. Papa told the LA Times, I guess I had a typical experience with my daughters going to college, that so-called empty nest syndrome, but I'm not sure. When the first one went, we were crying for a month. It was a two-year time span, but then the second one left, and we found ourselves making dinner reservations and kind of excited about the whole thing. Like, I thought to myself, I could do what I want, and I could actually enjoy things once in a while without being on someone else's schedule. In case you missed it, on Sunday, I dropped a bonus episode, which uh, shared the clips of Tony Hinchcliffe. You've probably seen Tony in the news right now. As I suspected, his set got a lot of attention. Tony Hinchcliffe tweeted, These people have no sense of humor. Wild that a vice presidential candidate would take time out of his busy schedule to analyze a joke taken out of context to make it seem racist. I love Puerto Rico and vacation there. I made fun of everyone. Watch the whole set. I'm a comedian, Tim. Might be time to change your tampon. Some comedians weighed in. Andy Kindler replied directly to that tweet, writing, Years ago when I did your Kill Tony show at a festival, I didn't know who you were. I just assumed you were a highly unpleasant a-hole. You certainly weren't funny. You're a grifter hack that wants to cash in by catering to your MAGA Nazi friends like Rogan. Gianmarco Ceresi, uh, three separate tweets. One, he wrote, it's never a pretty sight when an Austin comic tries out his material in New York. Two, politics aside, there are so many better racist comedians who deserve that RNC gig over Tony Hinchcliffe. Third one, You ever notice when there's a debate about the acceptability of a joke, it's almost always over one of the worst jokes you've ever heard? Mike Lee and Black wrote, are you bleeping kidding me in New York? Has this guy never seen West Side Story? But sure, no racism within the Trump campaign. And I like this one from Jesse Case, who wrote, the really sad part is that Tony works six months as MSG's door guy for that set. All right, some folks are looking for me to comment. Now, look, it's political season. I'm not trying to lose half the audience. All I want you to do is vote. Whoever you're for, you vote. I will comment on the joke itself as a joke. It's a bit hack. For example, you could sub in Ireland, Long Island, Epstein Island, and the joke works the same. For example, say I were in Los Angeles during the World Series, and I said this joke. I don't know if you know this, but there's a floating island of garbage. I think it's called Manhattan. That would probably play in Los Angeles. Now, you're already writing me notes. I get it. In context, at the event, sure. In context, at the event, specific choice of island, it is not the same as my World Series example. Congressman Richie Torres, Democrat from New York, tweeted, pretty good line, as a Puerto Rican, I'm tempted to call Hinchcliffe racist garbage, but doing so would be an insult to garbage. The Trump campaign has distanced itself from the joke. Campaign senior advisor Daniel Alvarez said this joke does not reflect the views of President Trump or the campaign. Tim Walls asked, who is that Jack Wad? Comedian Andrew Slater, if Tony Hinchcliffe cost Trump the election, then him becoming rich off being an awful hack was all worth it. Meanwhile, an educational nonprofit that had planned a pair of comedy shows in Puerto Rico for the upcoming weekend clarified on Monday that Tony Hinchcliffe was never scheduled to perform at... was never scheduled to perform there. Okay, well, we 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 didn't think so. I don't know why you brought that up. What's the story here, John? The gala venue in San Juan posted a social media announcement saying they were canceling an appearance by Tony Hinchcliffe. Reports are that that statement said, we announced the cancellation of the Tech My School event where comedian Tony Hinchcliffe was set to perform due to disrespectful comments towards Puerto Rico. At gala, we value respect for our culture and community. Puerto Rico deserves respect. But Tech My School... The nonprofit that had planned the two comedy shows at Gala said Hinchcliffe was never scheduled to perform on their page. They said they were featuring two comedians, Enrique Chacon and Heath Cortez, both of whom have previously appeared on Kill Tony. 
Their statement says, Tony Hinchcliffe has never been invited nor included in the programming of our fundraising event. Podcast newsletter Pod News happened to share on Monday that new data from Tubular Lab shows that Kill Tony is now the number one podcast on YouTube with 933.5 million U.S. minutes watched across YouTube and Facebook, up 21% month over month and 238% on the year. This was prior to the rally on Sunday. Some folks on social media are sharing this joke George Lopez made at a Tim Walls rally. After the word overnight, Lopez walks away from the microphone. Donald Trump said he was going to build a wall. And George Lopez said, you better build it in one day, because if you leave that material out there overnight. (laughs) The argument there is that Lopez made fun of his own, whereas Hinchcliffe took a shot at others. From Yahoo, eyewitnesses who were at Jamie Foxx's Netflix taping said Jamie made some claims about Diddy. Three separate people claim that Foxx made comments indicating that Diddy was responsible for his hospitalization in 2023, according to page six. Yahoo writes, though, a source tells In Touch that there's no truth to Diddy putting Jamie in the hospital. It remains unclear whether the comments were a joke or not. One of the eyewitnesses said he didn't think Jamie was joking. Y'all can determine whether he was joking or not when you see the show, because to me, I'm a new comedian. I've learned, and I know when somebody's setting up a punchline, and I know when you're serious. After he said, yeah, Diddy's the one that did something to me, he said, and I'm the one who called the feds on him. Comedy hype asked, are we saying that Jamie responded and alerted whatever activity Puff had going on to shut him down as his get back? Director Choke No Joke said, Jamie was scared, right? He disappeared, right? He's out in public now as soon as Puff went to jail. Well, that's all kinds of interesting. Meanwhile, on Gossip Corner, Pete Davidson surfaced looking healthy and in good spirits. He was at a Clippers game with his friend Machine Gun Kelly. Eyewitnesses noticed that Pete is now largely tattoo-less. The tattoos that once covered his neck and arms appear dramatically faded or completely gone, perhaps due to laser tattoo removal. In May of 21, Pete had told Seth Meyers, it takes like three hours. You have to get there three hours early to cover all your tattoos because for some reason people in movies, they don't have them that much. So I'm burning them all off, but burning them off is worse than getting them. Also tonight, the Cool Comedy and Hot Cuisine fundraiser. This is the one Bob Saget used to do. Jeff Ross will host the event. Both Jeff Ross and John Mayer will be honored with the Bob Saget Legacy Award, recognizing their commitment to continue Bob Saget's mission of raising awareness for the Scleroderma Research Foundation. Also performing, Whitney Cummings, Alex Edelman, Chris Hardwick, apparently out of comedy jail, and Jim Jeffries. Ali Wong was on Hot Ones. Sean Evans was curious, saying, I read the first place you ever did stand-up was at the Brainwash Cafe on Folsom in San Fran. Can you paint the picture for us? Ali said, oh my gosh, this is a deep cut. The place has been closed since 2017. She said it was literally like half cafe, half laundromat, 100% homeless shelter. And the show would start at 5 p.m. and you do three minutes to people doing naughty things to themselves hmm, and folding their laundry and a lot of comics judging you. It was great. She then talked about the Tenderloin neighborhood, saying those loins are not so tender in that neighborhood. Like if you step outside of our little theater, you will step in human feces for sure. It was gross and scary to enter and exit every single time. And then, my God, the audience, the poor audience, they got trapped. They got catfished into being there and they knew it and I knew it and I felt bad for them. (laughs) Hey, did you know that Saturday Night Live is turning 50? Did you hear about this? Well, we are going to talk about it every single day. Today, I will tell you that Bowen Yang did not want to play J.D. Vance. It was that Lorne Michaels guy insisting. Yang said, up until the show, I tapped Lorne on the shoulder and I was in the full beard and I was like, you can do a buyback if you want. Yang explained he initially had trouble getting into the character because he found him to be hollow. Then Bowen watched Hillbilly Elegy and learned that Vance had questioned his sexuality when he was younger, but was quickly shot down by Mama. Yang said, I was like, oh, this guy doesn't have a personality because he's never had the spine to claim it. Send your letters to Bowen Yang, and I will remind you, it's going to be really hard not to be political these next nine or so days. What are we down to? No, it's a week now. Eight? Eight days, I guess. North Star News spoke to Lewis Black, who's retiring at the end of the year. Any regrets? Lewis said, You'd be nuts if you didn't, but I've had a really good career, so I can regret all I want, but people will be going, really? You're going to cry about that? Everything has kind of worked out, but I did deal with some jackasses I shouldn't have. I was never good at business or show business, and I've worked with some real a-holes. In good advice for aspiring comics actors and writers, Lewis says, just do it, and do it again, and then do it again, and do it again. Get a group of people you like to work with, so if you want to be a comic, get three or four people who like you, and pick your spot to do an open mic night. 
or do a reading of a play, but work and work. The shortest distance between two points is to keep doing it if that's it. If you're writing, wake up and write. If you're doing stand-up, it doesn't matter if you've got three people in the world, you're still doing stand-up. It doesn't matter if you're five people in the world, you're still reading a play. You can do all that together as one thing. What's Lewis most excited for in the future? He says, not having to do a lot of stuff. Jimmy Fallon, he's been in the news a lot lately. He's getting an hour-long holiday music special. It will air in prime time after the annual presentation of Christmas in Rockefeller Center, a.k.a. the tree lighting, a.k.a. thing New Yorkers hate. Do you have any idea what lighting the tree at 530 does to traffic in New York City? Do you have any idea what it's like to walk anywhere between Times Square and that tree come, I don't know, Thanksgiving to about January 2nd? Nightmare. Well, bah humbug, Jimmy Fallon's holiday seasoning spectacular. We'll see Jimmy Fallon reunited with many of the performers featured on his new album, including Megan Trainer, Dolly Parton, J.B. Smoove, the Jonas Brothers, Timberlake, LL, The Roots, and Weird Al. December 4th, 10 p.m. Jordan Klepper specials on Comedy Central tonight at 11.30 p.m. I will be asleep. Also, the people that did the press release screwed up. It says the special will premiere on Comedy Central at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're still on Eastern Daylight Time, folks. People try a little too hard with that standard thing. I see people mess that up all the time. Major pet peeve of mine because I work in broadcasting. And when you do national programming and satellites and whatnot are involved, you have to be exact. So if you mean 11.30 p.m. EDT, you say that. I digress. The terribly titled The Daily Show Presents, colon, Jordan Klepper Fingers the Pulse, colon, Rally Together. We'll see Jordan travel to Trump events in swing states over the election's crucial closing days. This time, he'll bring along some curious friends and experts in their fields to help unpack and understand why so many Americans are supporting Donald Trump. Yesterday, I recorded with Des Bishop. By the way, his new special is fantastic. It is called Of All People. You will find it on YouTube. I have it in my top specials of the year, pretty high up, I think around number 11. That will be the Saturday episode, but we did talk about Tony Hinchcliffe, and I thought I'd pull out a rather long clip here. So here is Dez and I talking about Tony. Has Tony Hinchcliffe made the news in Ireland yet? <laughs> well, I, it's hard for me to know if he's made the news in Ireland because I've very much been on top of that story. Uh, so, I mean, I have a, a, a lot of thoughts on on all that stuff. Can I just make a quick disclaimer? The reason why, I know that you're, you're not really a video guy, but I'm outside because fun fact about Ireland, Ireland does its fireworks for Halloween, not for the 4th of July. And it's leading up to Halloween. So there's a lot of fireworks. So the dog goes insane. So I've had to go outside and leave the dog inside. So you may hear faint barking, but it could be a lot worse. And trust me, when I'm not recording, it's so much worse with me and the dog in the house. <laughs> but anyway, on the Tony Hinchcliffe front, I mean... Where do we start? <laughs> so I, I try not to hang myself on this show. You know, people don't come to this thing for politics. They come for me to speak with comedians. So my take on it, if I break it down just as a joke it, it, in no context, for example, during the subway series, if I go to Los Angeles and I go, hey, there's a floating pile of garbage uh, on an island. It's called Manhattan. If I do that during the World Series in L.A., that joke might fly. But in the context, in the room it was done, it takes on whole other connotations and it's really not a good joke it's a one out of ten two out of ten joke max it's dated on top of it and i'm not like one to come after tony hinchcliffe but in the context of the importance of the week and a half that we're in leading up to an election like why you would choose like a dated target like puerto ricans like because obviously you can like you just did you can insert whatever island you want onto that joke it's it's pretty basic at the roast of tom brady if they're roasting like a puerto rican comic that was on the the dace then you might go okay you know there's a lot of that type of joke at sure. a roast but like when the world's cameras are on you and you're a comedian and it's fine you've been hired to make some jokes leading up to it like why you would choose that as your joke i mean you want to make that point like oh you can joke about anything but it's actually kind of like it's juvenile, it's immature, and it's actually, it's really stupid. Like, I actually think Trump is kind of stupid. So I, I think that, like, he would never think broad enough to go, maybe I shouldn't have a risky comedian on, like, this close to an election when certain states' votes might literally hinge on 
20,000 people like it did in Georgia, 22,000 people. He may have shifted enough votes to change a state. That's insane. And that's your comedy news for today. If you enjoy the program, tell a friend about it. They might like it too. If you would like this thing without commercials, check the link in the show notes, short version there, five bucks a month. Do it. See you tomorrow.